But for more of a reader on the theme set to drive markets this week, Peter Maguire from XM joins us now live in the studio. Peter, welcome to the program this morning. Good morning, Cara. It's Hello, Andrew. It's Hi. pretty mixed out there at the moment, isn't it? The Australian sure. dollar obviously in focus overnight yeah. or on Friday because of that pop through the 78 mark. Mm. But what's on the docket this week that could move? I guess both Australian dollar and local equity markets other than reporting. Well, I think the Aussie dollar, you know, that, that US, I'm, I'm concerned as far as where power plays this week. We've got some announcements from on Wednesday and Thursday. Also, uh, the Australian, British and Japanese central banks are talking. And of course, they're, well, when I say that, their governments are talking. And the next part is that Aussie dollar push up maybe a 79 handle, possibly even 80 by Easter. I think that's very achievable. And maybe we're on the tailwind of the UK pound, which is now at 140. We spoke on that a couple of weeks back about 136. So it's been an enormous trade to the upside. So vaccine rollouts commencing today and all of that possibly pushing Aussie dollar higher. So is this all about a bond yield story? Do you think, well, I think or is, is, it just, is it just some volatility returning to the equity I think it's market? two things. I think, yes, of volatility and certainly the bond yield story. But the reality of the matter is these currencies have been possibly hammered to the downside for too long. And now they're just having that push up. So it's not a bad time to be a currency trader. <laughs> right. What about the, uh, the US dollar then? Uh, what sort of support are you seeing there sort of going forward? Uh, yeah, it's still at that 90 handle, Andrew. It's 90.3, 90.4. I don't see any really change unless we see 89s rolling forward and as bond rates are starting to tick up um, inflation story bubbling away over here somewhere so maybe we're going to hold at that 90 level but the pound has been an enormous trade great time to be long pound yen hasn't been too bad but it's been very much range bound mm. and that aussie dollar and kiwi dollar they're really big success stories for traders and that's all they want is movement yeah well, let's talk about that Kiwi then. Obviously, a commodities currency, but focus yep. on the RBNZ once again, considering sure. the recovery that we're seeing in New Zealand. Yep. Are we going to see a more hawkish view from the RBNZ? Mm. Is I, that going to take the, the currency even higher? I think it will take it a little bit higher from here. It's had a great run up. You look at their housing market. I mean, it's absolutely on fire. So all of those undercurrents are moving forward and that, that uh, Kiwi dollar has got the capacity to probably a 73, 74 handle in the not too distant future. So, sorry. What's the trade-off, do you think, between that Aussie Kiwi cross then? Who's, who's going to be the winner there? I think we will be. I, yeah. think that, I think we're really coming home with a wet sail and uh, we've got a strong wind behind us. And I think by Easter, if not May, we'll be probably around 81, 82. And I think we'll be very, very strong moving forward. Our economy is going very well. I'm walking through here this morning and it's back to where we were in 2019. You know, the streets are busy. Certainly the buses are busier. And Wynyard was like, you know, it's, it's game on at 8.30 when I walk here from George Street. Mm. So you say where we are at the moment is we're in a very strong position. Then. I think so, Andrew. I think we're really on the tail of, of uh, Asia as well. Have a look in where they're really rolling forward. China's performing very, very well. So is a lot of parts of Asia. Indonesia's a little bit mixed. But yeah, overall, we're doing OK. Do you feel as though, like, as far as Australian equities are concerned, the market is sort of underperforming, certainly when you put it sort of relative to US stocks? Yeah, well, we've had a big march up, and I'm not sure how much further there is. It comes down to, you know, those earnings and uh, activity in the market. So, uh, you know, from a retail trader's mindset, they're really bullish US equities. Now, are we really at that end of that hyper cycle? And is it really just the hot air running through now? So maybe there's a little bit of more uptick, but... Um, markets don't go up forever, Andrew. And of course, that Australian dollar obviously weighing on those local stocks, making those exactly. uh, our own equity markets much more expensive. Yep, no um, doubt in that. And possibly, you know, as I said, 81 or 82 cents for the, for the dollar. There's every chance that, you know, that really crimps markets a little bit. But I think that the Aussies, the, our stock markets, it's just been a bit of a laggard compared to other markets. And I think that, that we'll see a return a little bit further upside. But um, yeah, it's going to be, it, it's just a slow, hard grind up from here, I think. And just as far as that support that commodity prices are giving the Aussie at the yep. moment, um, are you seeing that continue then? Because, I mean, you look across the board with those commodities, they're all those, those significant price rises we've seen. Absolutely. Copper nearly at $9,000 yep. a metric tonne. It's really had a resurgence in the last matter of months. Crude oil's up 55% since the start of November. So there's a three and a half month or four month bull market for oil gases up. All of these issues 
that really impact, I think, inflation moving forward also, the spending power of the wallet and the purse. So yeah, those commodities have had a big mull, big bull run, and I think that will continue very much this decade. The super cycle ain't dead, and it's a time to be across all of those commodity sectors. All right, Peter, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Cara. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Pete.